crochet project you're going to need your five millimeter crochet hook as well as a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle or darning needle. This is my favorite one to use. It has the pointy end on it. I just wanted to show a close-up of a similar blanket that I made in this style and you can see the gorgeous flower it creates. Here are the petals and then here's the stem of the flower and then the flower itself. So you can see that there are some gaps on this crochet pattern that I'm going to show you. So that's why someone had told me that they loved this pattern so much they just thought that the holes were a little bit large so they they recommended that maybe a receiving bl blanket on the back and I thought that was a wonderful idea. So I just applied a receiving blanket to the back and on this receiving blanket it didn't come with a um, good enough uh, stitch on the border. So I created my own embroidery stitch. I'm going to show you how to do that on this video tutorial. That way you can cro crochet a border to the blanket. And I used the same flower style and again you can see the petals here, the stem of the flower and then the flower itself as the border. So I crocheted the flower all the way around the border and it turned out really gorgeous. So that's how I'm going to show you how to crochet this blanket. I'm also going to show you how to make the matching crochet baby hat. So you can see the flower design right here. The petal, the stem, and then the beautiful flower all along the brim of the hat. So there will be a separate video tutorial for the hat, the matching hat. For the receiving blanket, if you liked mine, I got a special deal where you get four receiving blankets. This is Child of Mine made by Carter's and I just love Carter's baby products. This size is 30 inches by 30 inches or 76 centimeters by 76 centimeters. It's 100% cotton. You get four of them. So the unicorn one is the main one that I really liked. And of course you get one really good one and then the others aren't too bad, the design. This one has the polka dots. Then you have the solid color and then there's also a really pretty one with the little flowers on it. So on video tutorial I'm going to use the little flower one for the backing and then on my other one that came in this pack it was a really cute unicorn one. So for mine I have the tag here and I went ahead and cut it off but it, it says it's 100% cotton and wash before use, M machine wash cold, and with light colors but um, just to let you know if you like the same style that that's what you should do before you start to crochet with it and for mine I'm going to go ahead and cut this tag and then you can see how the stitch you're not able to crochet with this stitch it's too thin it's too hard to get your crochet hook through the stitch so when we get ready to crochet the blanket to the receiving blanket I will show you how to make the embroidery stitch before we attach the backing. The yarn that I used on video tutorial is by Lion Brand Yarns. It's called Ice Cream. The measurements are 360 meters. It's a light 3 yarn, 100% acrylic, but it's really soft. The color is strawberry. So as most of you know, different yarn choice or crochet hook size can affect the size of your blanket. So if you change your crochet hook size, then you're going to have to alter the size of your chain. If you liked the sparkly pink, light pink yarn that I used, it's by Baby Joy DK Sparkle. So you can see I paid a little bit more for this one. Here's the 
web link which is designeryarns.uk.com the color is 104 pink and it's actual actually only 5% polyester 65% polyacryl and 30% polyamide it's only 320 meters and of course you're going to need more than one skein to make this blanket with this one I used two skeins of this yarn this style of yarn So the first thing that you're going to do is just take the main color yarn that you want for your blanket and you're going to fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook and then we're going to make a chain so I'm just going to show you four chains on video tutorial but you're going to need a total of a hundred chains if you're making the same size as me you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and then go through the loop for your first chain yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your second chain third and fourth. So go ahead finish your chain of a hundred and then come back. So now after you finish your chain of a hundred or the size that you want for yours you're going to make a double crochet into the sixth chain from the hook. So you're going to count back from the crochet hook. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're going to make a double crochet into the sixth chain from the hook. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to take the crochet hook and go into that sixth chain from the hook. You're going to bring up a loop and then now you have three chains on three loops on the hook. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through only two of the loops and then you have two loops remaining so you yarn over, turn the hook upside down and then go through the two remaining loops. So now you're going to make a chain of three one two three and then you're going to skip three oh, chains oh and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. So skip three chains on your starting chain and then make a double crochet into the fourth stitch. So just yarn over and then go into that fourth chain on the starting chain, bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two of the loops two loops remaining yarn over and then go through the two remaining loops and then you're going to repeat that one more time so you're going to chain three 
One, two, three. Then you're going to skip three stitches on your starting chain. One, two, three. And then you're going to make a double crochet into that fourth chain on the starting chain. So just yarn over, go into that fourth stitch on the starting chain, bring up a loop, and then complete a double crochet. So now you're going to chain two and then you're going to skip two stitches on the starting chain and then make a double crochet into the third stitch on the starting chain so you just yarn over go into that third stitch on the starting chain bring up a loop and complete a double crochet and then you're going to repeat that one more time so chain two And then you're going to skip two stitches on the starting chain and then make a double crochet into that third stitch. Then you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way across to the end. So I'm going to repeat it one more time with you. So to start you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. You're going to skip three stitches on the starting chain and then make a double crochet into the fourth chain stitch on the chain. So yarn over, go into that fourth stitch on the chain, bring up a loop, Complete a double crochet. Then you're going to repeat that one more time. Chain three. One, two, three. You're going to skip three chains or stitches on the starting chain. Yarn over and make a double crochet into that fourth stitch on the starting chain. Now we already made our chain threes and then double crochet stitches. Now you're going to make two of your chain two. So the first one you're going to chain two. And then this time you're only going to skip two stitches on the starting chain and then make a double crochet into the third stitch on the starting chain. and then you need one more, so chain two. You're going to skip two stitches on the starting chain and then make a double crochet in the third stitch on the starting chain. And then that will complete the set. And then you start again. So go ahead and finish creating the same stitch pattern all the way across to the end and then come back. So now I've reached the end and I have two stitches remaining. This is how my work looks so far. So now you're just going to chain one and then make a double crochet into that last stitch on the end. So if you're a beginner I would recommend counting the double crochets after completing this first row. So I had a total of 29 double crochet after completing this row and I counted that first loop that we made on the end as your first double crochet and chain one. 
So just count all of your double crochets, and if you did it correctly, you should have 29 double crochet total before continuing on to the second row. So this first chain that we made, I'm going to refer that as the starting chain, and then we just completed the first row. So now we're going to move up to the second row. So you're going to make a chain of four. One, two, three, four. Then you're just going to turn your work. And then you're not going to make a double crochet into the chain one that you created from the previous row. You're going to make a double crochet into the stitch, into the double crochet stitch from the previous row. So you're just going to yarn over and then you're going to go into the top of the, of the double crochet stitch from the previous row, both loops, and then you're going to complete a double crochet. So now we're going to be making a butterfly cluster into every double crochet that's between the chain three spaces. And it's going to be the petals of the flower. And I just call it the butterfly cluster because it looks like a butterfly. So for the first cluster, you're going to take and yarn over and then go into the top stitch of the next double crochet. You're going to go through both loops and then bring up a loop to the height of a double crochet. So just bring up that loop to the height of a double crochet and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and just go through two of the loops. So now you have two loops on your crochet hook. And then you're going to yarn over again, go into the same stitch, and then bring up a loop to the height of a double crochet. And then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops only. And then you have three loops remaining on your hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through those three remaining loops. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. Then you're going to make a single crochet into that same stitch. And then you finished one side of the petal or the butterfly stitch. So now we're going to make the other side. So to make the other side, you're going to start with a chain of three. One, two, three. And then you're going to make your cluster stitch into the same stitch. So you yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. Bring up that loop again to the height of a double crochet. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two of the loops. You have two loops remaining. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop to the height of a double crochet. Just kind of gently pull up that loop with your crochet hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two of the loops. You have three loops remaining on your hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three of the hooks. And then you just completed your first butterfly stitch or petals. So now that brings you to your next double crochet. You're going to make a double crochet into the previous row's next double crochet. So just yarn over and then go into that next double crochet from the previous row and then complete a double crochet. Now 
Then you're going to chain two because the previous row has two chains. One, two, and then make a double skip those two chains from the previous row and make a double crochet into the previous row's double crochet stitch. Then you're going to chain two. Skip those two stitches from the previous row and then make a double crochet into the double crochet from the previous row. Then that will bring you to your next butterfly cluster because you can see how you have your double crochet between the two chain three spaces. So I'm going to work this first this butterfly stitch with you. So first we're going to make our first cluster. So you yarn over, go into the double crochet stitch from the previous row. You're going to skip those chain three spa stitches or spaces. Bring up a loop to the height of a double crochet. You want to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. You have two loops remaining. Yarn over, go into the same stitch. Bring up a loop to the height of a double crochet. Now you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two of the loops. Three loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through those three remaining loops. Then your cluster is complete. You're going to chain three. One, two, three. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch. And then you finished one side of the petal or the butterfly cluster. Now we're going to make the other side. So the first thing you're going to do is chain three. One, two, three. And then we're going to make our cluster into the same stitch. So you yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, and then remember you want to bring this loop up to the height of a double crochet. Now I have three loops on my hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two of the loops. That will leave two loops on your hook. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop to the height of a double crochet. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops. Three loops remaining. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through those three remaining loops. And then you just completed your butterfly cluster or petals of the flower. Then you're going to double crochet into the next double crochet from the previous row. So yarn over, go into that double crochet stitch from the previous row. and then complete a double crochet. And then you're just going to repeat this all the way across until you've completed the row. So I'm going to go ahead and get um, crochet over to the next butterfly stitch. So I'm going to chain two, one, two, and then I'm going to skip two stitches from the previous row and make a double crochet into the next double crochet stitch. Chain two. Skip two stitches from the previous row and then double crochet 
into the next double crochet stitch and then that will bring me to my butterfly stitch or the petals for the flower so I'm going to make my first cluster Now I'm going to make the other side. And then repeat. So go ahead, finish your second row repeating this pattern all the way across and then come back. So now I've reached the end and you can see how I finished my double crochet and I still have a chain one and a double crochet or two stitches remaining. So chain one and then you're going to skip one stitch so you'll have a chain one space from the previous row and then make a double crochet into that last stitch. And then you finished the second row. So now after finishing row two, go ahead and count your petals. You want to make sure that you finished row two with seven petals. So here's one, two. So go ahead, finish counting your petals. You should have ended up with a total of seven before moving uh, on to row three. So the first thing you're going to do for row three is you're going to make a chain of four. One, two, three, four. So that first chain four counts as your double crochet and chain one stitch. So go ahead and turn your work. And then on the previous row, you can see how you have your chain one stitch and then the double crochet. You're going to skip the chain one stitch and make a double crochet into the first double crochet stitch from the previous row. and then that will bring you to your petal from the previous row. So we know that the petal is made in the chain three with chain three um, spaces. So the first thing you're going to do is make a chain of three. One, two, three. And then we're going to make a treble stitch right into the same stitch where we made the previous row's petal. So to make a treble stitch, you're going to yarn over twice. So I yarn over twice, and then you're going to go into the same stitch where you made your petal stitch from the previous row. So go right down the center into that stitch. You're going to go behind the petal, and then you're going to bring up a loop. So now you have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through two loops. Now you have three loops on the hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through two more loops. And then you have two loops remaining. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through those two remaining loops. And then you just completed a treble stitch which will be the stem for your flower. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then you're going to make a double crochet into the next double crochet stitch from the previous row. So just yarn over. 
and then go into that double crochet stitch from the previous row and then bring up a loop and then just complete a double crochet. Then you're going to chain two because the previous row had a chain two space, so chain two. Skip the chain two space from the previous row and make a double crochet into the next double crochet stitch. Then you're going to chain two again. Skip the chain two space from the previous row and make a double crochet into the next double crochet stitch from the previous row. And then this is how my work is looking so far. And then that brings us to our next petal from the previous row. So the first thing you're going to do is chain three. And then you're going to make a treble crochet stitch right into the same stitch where we made our petal from the previous row. So you're going to yarn over twice. You're going to go into that stitch from the previous row where we made our petal right down the center. You're going to go behind the petal. You're going to bring up a loop. Now you have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through two loops only. You have three loops remaining. Yarn over and go through two loops only. You have two loops remaining. Yarn over and go through those two remaining loops. Then your stem of your flower is complete. Then chain three. And then make a double crochet into the next double crochet stitch from the previous row. And then you just keep repeating this all the way across. The same pattern all the way across. And then come back. So now you just finished row three, and for row three you should have only had a total of seven trebles for each of your petal stitches if you completed that row correctly. And this is how your work should be looking so far. So now we're going to move up to row four. So for row four you're only going to make a chain of one. So only chain one and then turn your work. Then in the next stitch you're going to go right into the chain one space and make a single crochet. So go right into the chain one space, bring up a loop, and then complete your single crochet. And then that will bring you to your double crochet stitch. So you're going to make a single crochet into that stitch as well. and then that will bring you to your stitch with the flower. So in the chain three space you're going to make three single crochet into that space. So go into the chain three space, bring up a loop, make your first single crochet, and then you're going to make two more into that same space. So just go right into that same space, bring up a loop, complete your second single crochet, and then go back into the same space, bring up a loop, and then complete your third single crochet. And then that will bring you to your treble stitch from the previous row. So we're going to make our flower part of the flower. We won't complete the flower until the next row. But you're going to go right into the treble stitch and then bring up a loop and then make a single crochet. And then you're going to chain 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So now you have a chain of 10. 
and then you're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch. So you're actually creating a chain 10 loop. So go into that treble stitch, bring up a loop, and then make a single crochet. So you finished your first loop, your first chain 10 loop, and we're going to make a total of three of these loops. So now you're going to chain 10 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So now you have your second chain ten. Go right into the same stitch and make a single crochet. And then you just finished your second chain ten loop. So now we're going to make one more in the same stitch. So I finished my chain 10 and then I'm going to make a single crochet into the same stitch to complete my third chain 10 loop. So now I have three chain 10 loops into the previous rows treble crochet stitch. So now that brings you to the next chain 3 space. So you're going to make three single crochet into that chain three space. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next double crochet stitch. And then that brings you to a chain two space, so you only make two single crochet into the chain 2 space. Then that brings you to your next double crochet. So you're going to make a single crochet into that stitch. And then that brings you to your next chain 2 space. So you make two single crochets into that next chain 2 space. Then that brings you to a double crochet. So you make a single crochet into that double crochet stitch and then that brings you to your next flower. So again, your next flower, you're going to have a chain 3 space, so make 3 single crochet into that chain 3 space. And then that will bring you to your treble stitch from the previous row. So you're going to make a single crochet into that treble stitch from the previous row. And then you're going to make your three chain 10 loops into the same stitch. So I made a chain of 10. Then I'm going to make a single crochet into the same stitch to complete my first chain 10 loop. Now I'm going to make that two more times. So I finished my second chain 10 loop, make my third one. Into the same stitch. So then I finished three chain 10 loops into the treble stitch from the previous row and then my next stitch will be the three single crochet into the chain three loop from the previous row. And then a single crochet into the double crochet stitch from the previous row. And then that will bring me to my chain two space, which is two single crochet. So you're going to go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way across. So we're starting to make our actual flower portion with this row, after completing this row. So now I reached the end. I finished my last single crochet on the end of the fourth row. And you should have the three chain two, 10 loops 
over each of your flowers. So just double check and make sure that each of your flowers has the three chain 10 loops and that everything's lining up like it should. So now we're ready to move up to the fifth row. So you're going to take and chain one. Turn your work. And you're not going to make a single crochet in the base of your chain one because your chain one will count as your first stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch over, which would, should be the single crochet that you made into the chain one space. And then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch across. When you get to your three chain 10 loops, you're going to be making a single crochet into each of the chain 10 loops. So I'm going into the treble stitch that we made the chain, chain 10 loops in and I'm going right in the center of the first chain 10 loop yep. and I'm going to bring up a loop and make a single crochet and then the middle stitch and again I'm in the same treble stitch where I made the chain 10 loops and I'm making my second single crochet in the center of the middle chain 10 loop and then in the same stitch I'm going to go right down the center of the third chain 10 loop and make a single crochet. So I made a single crochet in the same stitch for each of the chain 10 loops right down the center then you're going to go into the next stitch over and continue making one single crochet in every stitch across. So now this side of your work is the wrong side of your work and this side where the chain 10 loops are will be the right side of the work and these chain 10 loops will become the flower. So on our next row we'll be folding up each of the chain 10 loops to create the flower. So this is the right side and I'm going to turn it back over to the wrong side and I'm going to continue making one single crochet in every stitch until I get to my next flower. So I'm going to work one more flower with you so you can see how I did that. So now I'm coming up on my first chain 10 loop. So in that treble stitch that we made the chain 10 loops in, you're going to go into that stitch down the center of the first chain 10 loop. And I'm going to bring up a loop and then just make a single crochet. Then I'm going to go back in the same stitch I'm going up the middle chain 10 loop and then I'm going to bring up a loop and complete a single crochet. Then the last single crochet in the same stitch will be down the center of that third chain 10 loop. And then you just continue making one single crochet in every stitch until you get to your next three chain 10 loops. And then this is what your work will look like on the wrong side. And then when you flip it over to the right side, you have your flower that's starting to form. So now you should have a total of 111 total stitches. This is the wrong side. So now you're not going to have trouble really telling from the wrong side from the right side. 
So you always have to keep track of it because you don't want to form one of your flowers on the wrong side. So always pay attention. You should have all your flowers on the same side of your work. So this is the right side. You can see all of my chain 10 loops are facing the right direction, which is what you need to make sure that when you make your chain 10 loops for the flowers, that your flowers are all on the right side of your work. So now, I just finished a single crochet in my last stitch and I double checked my stitch count, which was 111. Now you can chain one. We're going to move up to the sixth row. So chain one, turn your work, and again, you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across. So I just made a single crochet directly above the chain one loop. So you want to make sure that your stitches are still remaining one to one. And remember that we made three single crochets in the treble stitch so that we could make the flower. So now I have the three single crochet before the flower, or one single crochet in the next three stitches I should say before the flower. So you can see that I have my chain one stitch which is one, two, three, four, five, six single crochet before I reach my first flower and I'm going to pull up the first chain 10 loop and hold it over the, sing the, single, the next stitch so I can make a single crochet right through the chain 10 loop and what you're going to do is secure it upwards. So you're going to go right in the middle of the chain 10 loop into that single, that next single crochet stitch and then make a single crochet. And then that will pin up that chain 10 loop. And you can kind of pull on the chain 10 loop to make it even, but you can see how it made the first flower edge of the flower. Now we're going to make the middle portion of the flower with the middle chain 10 loop. So you're going to pull up the chain 10 loop again over the next stitch. So you can see the next stitch is right here. That's the stitch you're going to go through, but you're going to go through that stitch through the chain 10 loop. So just kind of hold that chain 10 loop up so you can go right in the center of it into the next stitch. So make sure you go into the right stitch and make your single crochet. And you find it. There it is. So then I made my middle, and you can kind of pull on the chain 10 loop if you need to make it sent the single crochet centered. So you can see that I have the side of the flower made with the first chain 10 loop, the middle portion made with the second chain 10 loop. So now, in the next stitch, I'm going to hold up the chain 10 loop, go into the center of the chain 10 loop, and go into that next stitch, bring up a loop, and complete my last single crochet. And then you just completed your full first flower. So here's the petal, here's that treble stitch stem, and then here's your chain 10 loops that formed a flower. And then you just go into the next stitch over, and remember, you had three single crochet in the chain three loop after the flower. So you can kind of keep track of the stitches and make sure that you're not adding stitches or have uh, less stitches. You want to maintain that stitch count across. So now you can see that you have your double crochet stitch. You're going to make your single crochet into the single crochet stitch that's above that double crochet stitch. 
and you're just going to continue one single crochet in every stitch until you reach your first flower or your next flower I should say. So I'm going to work one more flower with you. Let me just show you what my work is looking like. So now I just made a single crochet right above the previous row's double crochet. So now I'm at that chain three before the flower. So I know I need three single crochet before the flower to kind of help you keep track of your stitches and where you are. And now we're right up to those three stitches that were in the treble stitch to pin up the loops of the flower. So I'm going to take the first chain 10 loop and hold it up. I'm going to go right into the center of the chain 10 loop into the next stitch and then make my single crochet. And then you can kind of pull on your chain 10 loop if you need to center it. And then I'm going to hold up the middle chain 10 loop, go right through the center into the next stitch make a single crochet so my center of the flower is finished hold up the chain 10 loop and go into that next stitch for the third and final stitch for the flower then I'm going to go into the next stitch over for my three one single crochet in the next three stitches and then you're at the double crochet single crochet stitch right above it. So now you know what to do. Just continue one single crochet in every stitch until you reach your flower and then you'll pin up each of the chain 10 loops with the single crochet right down the center and then come back. So now this is what your work should look like and this is the whole pattern. So you're going to keep repeating these first six rows the exact same way until you get the length that you want for your flower baby blanket. So this is the right side, how the flowers should look. And you can see how the loops, the chain 10 loops, creates the puffy flower. So these puffy flowers should always be on the right side. So you shouldn't have any puffy flowers on the wrong side. So I'm going to go ahead and get you started with the next rows. So again you're going to go back to the same stitch pattern that you made for the first row. So you're going to take and you're going to start with a chain of four. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to turn your work and then you're going to skip one stitch because this first chain four is a double crochet and a chain one. So you're going to skip one stitch for the chain one and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. And all of your double crochets should be in line with the previous rows double crochets. So it makes it easy to remember. So then, you remember that for the flower, you need chain three loops for the flower. So you're going to chain three when you get to the flower. One, two, three. Then you're going to skip three stitches. And then you're going to make a double crochet into you're going to skip actually four stitches and then make a double crochet into the fifth stitch. So it's a little bit different. And the reason why it's a little bit different is because we had three single crochets in the treble stitch. So here's the double crochet from our first row and you can see that they're lined up. So you have your three, chain three there, and then you'll skip four instead of three. 
Then you're going to chain three again. One, two, three. And then you're going to skip the four stitches and then make a double crochet in line with all of the previous rows double crochets. Then that brings you to your chain two, chain two, one, two, skip two stitches and make your double crochet in the next stitch and it's in line with the previous rows double crochets. And then you're going to chain two again, skip two and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. And then that will bring me to my next flower. So I'm going to chain three. And then remember we have to skip four stitches this time because we had three single crochet in the treble stitch. And then you're going to chain three again. And then you're going to skip four and then make a double crochet right in line with the previous rows double crochets. And then you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way across to the end. And then you're going to skip one stitch because this first chain four is a double crochet and a chain one. So you're going to skip one stitch for the chain one and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. And all of your double crochets should be in line with the previous rows double crochets. So it makes it easy to remember. So then you remember that for the flower you need chain three loops for the flower. So you're going to chain three when you get to the flower one, two, three. Then you're going to skip three stitches and then you're going to make a double crochet into you're going to skip actually four stitches and then make a double crochet into the fifth stitch. So it's a little bit different. And the reason why it's a little bit different is because we had three single crochets in the treble stitch. So here's the double crochet from our first row. And you can see that they're lined up. So you have your three, chain three there, and then you'll skip four instead of three. Then you're going to chain three again. One, two, three. And then you're going to skip the four stitches and then make a double crochet in line with all of the previous rows double crochets. Then that brings you to your chain two, chain two, one, two, skip two stitches and make your double crochet in the next stitch and it's in line with the previous rows double crochets. And then you're going to chain two again, skip two and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. And then that will bring me to my next flower. So I'm going to chain three. And then remember we have to skip four stitches this time because we had three single crochet in the treble stitch. And then you're going to chain three again. And then you're going to skip four and then make a double crochet right in line with the previous rows double crochets. 
And then you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way across to the end. So now you can double check your work. Make sure that all of your double crochets are in line with the previous row. And then also, you should still have only 29 double crochet after completing this row. So for beginners especially, I recommend that you count. Do the counting because it's better than having to undo all of your hard work. And then on the front, you can see the pattern and how everything is lined up like it should be. All the flowers, all the double crochets, they're all lined up. That way you can keep track and know that you're, you're crocheting it correctly. So then, we're ready to move up to the next row. So for the next row, again, you're going to start with a chain of four. One, two, three, four and then go ahead and turn your work and then that first chain four counts as your double crochet in a chain of one so you're going to skip the chain one space on the previous row and make a double crochet into the top stitch of the double crochet from the previous row and then we know that we have a flower so we have our chain threes on both sides of our next double crochet. So at this point we're going to make our petal or the butterfly stitch. So you're going to yarn over and then you're going to go into, you're going to skip those chain three spaces and go into the double crochet space and bring up a loop and bring it up to the height of a double crochet. Then yarn over and then go through two and then yarn over, go into the same stitch bring up a loop to the height of a double crochet, yarn over and go through two, and then you're going to yarn over and go through all three to complete your cluster. Then you're going to chain three, and then make a single crochet into the same stitch, the double crochet stitch, where you made the cluster. and then you finished one side of the petal. Then you're going to chain three again and then you're going to make your cluster into the same stitch. So you yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop to the height of a double crochet, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops only and that will leave you two loops on your hook. Yarn over, go into the same stitch bring up a loop to the height of a double crochet, yarn over, go through two, and then you're going to yarn over and go through the remaining three. And then you completed your petals or the butterfly stitch. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the next double crochet. Then you're going to chain two double crochet, skip two stitches and then double crochet into the next double crochet. Chain two, double crochet into the next double crochet. And then that brings you to your next flower. So go ahead, finish this row, repeating this pattern, and then come back. So now this is what my work looks like. I finished the petals right above each of the flowers. So make sure that you have a petal above the row of flowers. Each flower row has petals above it to make sure that you're, you've done it correctly. That way you don't have to go back and undo all of your hard work. So now we're ready to move up to the next row. So you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Turn your work. And again, we've done this before, but I'm just kind of going through it again 
Make sure that you know how to repeat these rows to create your flowers. So again, remember that the first uh, chain four counts as a double crochet and a chain one. So I'm going to skip the chain one space from the previous row and then just make a double crochet into the double crochet stitch. And then remember that with the flowers, you're going to chain three. So one, two, three. And then for this row, you're going to make a treble stitch right down the center of the petal. So you're going to yarn over twice, and then you're going to go right into the stitch where you made your petal, right down the center. You're going to bring up a loop. You have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through two loops. Yarn over and go through two loops. Yarn over and go through two loops. Then you're going to chain three again. One, two, three. And then you're going to make a double crochet into the first, the next double crochet stitch. So I'm going to repeat this again for you. So I'm going to chain two. Skip the next two stitches, make a double crochet into the double crochet stitch from the previous row. Chain two. Skip two stitches and make a double crochet into the double crochet stitch. Then that brings me to my next flower, so I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to make a treble crochet stitch, yarn over twice. I'm going to go into the center of the petal, bring up a loop, I have four loops on the hook, yarn over, go through two, yarn over and go through two loops, and then yarn over and go through two loops to complete my treble crochet stitch. Then I'm going to chain three, and then double crochet into the next double crochet. So yarn over, go into the next double crochet, and then make my double crochet. And then you're just going to repeat that pattern all the way across, and then come back. So now you should have reached the end. Go ahead and double check your work. Make sure that your treble stitches are in line with your petals, and that your double crochet stitches are all lining up. And this is what it looks like on the front. Now, we're going to move up to the next row, and for the next row, you're going to start with a chain of one. And then turn your work. So that chain one counts as your first single crochet for the next row. And remember that in the chain one space, you're going to go right into the chain one space from the previous row and make a single crochet. And then in the double crochet from the previous row, you're going to make a single crochet. And then that brings you up to the flower. So we know that there's a chain three space for the flower, so you're going to make three single crochet into the chain three space. And then that brings you to the treble stitch. So go ahead and make a single crochet in the treble stitch. Now in the treble stitch, this is where we make our three chain three loops. So now you're going to make a chain of ten. And then make a single crochet into the same stitch. So that's my first loop. Sorry about that, my phone. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch. That's my second chain 10 loop completed. Now I'm going to make another chain 10. And then single crochet into the same stitch. So I have three chain 10 loops in my treble stitch from the previous row, which is going to turn into the flower. 
just like we made before. So now you're just going to continue. I have the chain three loop after the um, the chain three loop after the flower. So you go into that chain three space and just make one sing three single crochet into the chain three space after the flower. Then you're going to make a single crochet in the next double crochet. And then that brings you to the chain two space. So you go into that chain two space and make two single crochet. And then you just repeat this all the way across. As soon as you reach the flower, you'll make your three chain ten loops right into the treble stitch from the previous row. So now you should have your chain ten loops in each of your treble stitches. So just double check that you made the three chain ten loops in each one. And then you're ready to move up to the next row. So for the next row you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to make one single crochet in each stitch back across. And remember that when you get to your first flower, I'm going to show you what you need to do. So one of the things that I did to keep track of the single crochet stitches is you know that you have the first chain one and then you have the single crochet in the chain one space and then you have a single crochet over the double crochet and then you have three single crochets above the chain three loop. And then you're going to take and go into the treble stitch where you made the chain 10 loops and you're going to come right up the center of the first chain 10 loop and then make a single crochet. So you just want to make sure that your chain 10 loop is on the right side. So now you're going into the same treble stitch and this time you're going to come up the center loop. So the center chain 10 loop and make a single crochet. So that's your second single crochet in the treble stitch. Then you have one more chain 10 loop. You're going to go in the same treble stitch from the previous row, come up the center of that third chain 10 loop, and then make your third single crochet in the same stitch. So you have the three single crochets in the treble stitch from the previous row, and then you have your three chain 10 loops in the front or right side of the blanket. So then you're ready to go across the three single crochet before the single crochet and the double crochet stitch. So that's just how I keep track of the stitches and make sure that I'm not adding stitches where you don't want them. So here's my first single crochet, second single crochet, and third single crochet after the flower, and then I have a single crochet in the same stitch above the double crochet from the previous row. And then you know you have a chain two space so it should have two single crochet. So one single crochet in each of those two and then one single crochet in the double crochet stitch or above the double crochet stitch. And then you have another chain two space so you'd have one single crochet in each of those and then that brings you to your double crochet from the previous rows single crochet and then you're right back to before the flower. So you have three single crochet before the flower. So here's one, two, and three. And then in the treble stitch you're going to go right through the middle of the first chain ten loop and make your single crochet. Same stitch right through the center, chain 10 loop, and make your single crochet. And then in the same stitch up the third in the center of the middle, third chain 10 loop, make your single crochet. Then you know you have three single crochet before your double crochet, so you're not adding any more stitches. And then you just keep repeating this pattern all the way across 
and then come back. So now you've reached the end, just double check that you have the chain 10 loops all on the right side and none of them are on the wrong side. And then we're ready to move up to our next row. So for our next row you're going to chain 1, turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then a single crochet in every stitch until you get up to the flower and I kind of use the previous rows to help guide me so I know that this single crochet is over the double crochet and then of course you know you have a chain three loop right before the flower so you know you need three single crochets here's one two three and then that brings you to the three single crochet that have the chain 10 loops. So you're going to go ahead and bring your first chain 10 loop up and then go into the next stitch right through the center of the chain 10 loop and then make your single crochet. And then you can move that to the side and then bring up your next chain 10 loop and you're going to go into that next stitch right through the chain 10 loop. Oops. I went right in front of my yarn. You don't want to go in front of your yarn. And then just bring up a loop to complete your second single crochet. It's holding up the second chain 10 loop. And then bring up your third chain 10 loop. Go into the next stitch and make sure you're getting into the right stitches too. You don't want to skip any stitches. So you're going right into the next stitch right through the center of the chain 10 loop that you pulled up and then make a single crochet and then you've completed your flower and you can move the chain 10 loops to kind of shape your flower and then you're just going to go into the next stitch now you know you have three stitches before your double crochet single crochet so you don't want to add any stitches and then you just make one single crochet in each stitch so here's my second and third after the flower and then that should bring you to your double crochet the single crochet that's lined up with the double crochets from the previous rows. Everything should line up. So go ahead, finish this row. Now you know how to complete each of your rows and complete each of your flowers. So go ahead and continue repeating one rows one through six until you have the length that you need, which will completely cover your receiving blanket, and then come back. Now I'm going to show you how to make an embroidery stitch around your receiving blanket. So here you can see that I have a little bit of a stitch on the end, but it's not enough for me to get my crochet hook through. So I'm going to create an embroidery stitch all the way around the border of this receiving blanket so that I can crochet to the embroidery stitch. So I use my darning needle and I like the sharp pointed end with the large I. I'm going to use the same color that I'm going to be using for the border and I'm using Baby B Sweet Delight Pomp Angel. It has 340 yards of yarn. Free pattern on the label. Here's some more information about this yarn. And the color is Angel. 210. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get enough of your yarn onto the darning needle and then you're going to take the receiving blanket and I start in one of the corners and I'm going to follow the edge so I'm going to go right where the straight edge is and I have the right side facing me and I'm just going to come up from the wrong side with my tapestry needle and I'm going to follow the edge of the stitching or if you don't have any stitching that you can follow on your receiving blanket just go in one to one and a half centimeters from the edge of your receiving blanket and then just come up with your yarn and tapestry or darning needle 
And then make sure you leave plenty, I leave plenty of uh, loose yarn in on the opposite side for tying a knot. And then you're going to take your yarn and you're going to place it at a 45 degree angle. And you're going to create a loop. So make sure that your yarn will loop around your tapestry needle. So I have it at about a 45 degree angle to the side and then I'm going to go right next to where I came up from the wrong side and then I'm going to go into the receiving blanket and I'm going to come up about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half and then I'm going to come inside of the loop of yarn that I created. It's a large loop but as you bring the yarn through it'll cinch the loop around the exit yarn So you can see how the loop is going to come right around the exit. Now you're going to want to go back down to the wrong side, but you don't want to go inside of the loop or embroidery stitch that you created because it will just undo your embroidery stitch. So you're going to want to go outside of the loop with your tapestry needle, just outside of the loop, and then back towards the wrong side. and then just bring the yarn back through. And then I'm just going to turn my work over. You can see how I completed an embroidery stitch. Now just turn your work over and you're going to want to tie a knot. So just take your loose yarn end that you made and just tie a knot. And then we're going to bury the loose yarn in later. That's just to hold the stitch as we continue our embroidery stitches around. So then, for the next stitch, you're just going to come up from the wrong side again, just, out, just next to your previous embroidery stitch. And again, you're going to want to take your yarn and then hold it over at a 45 degree angle and then you're just going to go right next to where you came out from the wrong side and again you're going to come back up about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half and your the tip of your darning needle should be coming inside of the large loop that you created with your yarn and as you pull that yarn through is going to cinch that loop around the exit. And then you completed your second embroidery stitch. And you just keep repeating this. Now what you can do is you can continue. You don't have to go back down. You can create your next embroidery stitch and just continue the chain. So now instead of going back in, you can continue the embroidery stitch. So the reason I did that with the first one was just to tie a knot on the other side. So now, to continue on, again you're going to go just outside of the loop. You don't want to go inside of the embroidery stitch loop. It'll just undo your work. So just outside of the loop, you're going to go back towards the wrong side and then come back up about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half. And then again, your, the tip of your darning needle is going to be inside of the loop that you, the large loop that you created. And then you're just going to cinch down the loop around your yarn to complete the embroidery stitch. And you can see how I'm creating my embroidery stitch right along the edge of my receiving blanket. And luckily I have the stitching here where I can just follow it. I'm going to do a couple more with you or make a couple more with you. And so that's how you make your embroidery stitch. And then you just continue making your embroidery stitches all the way around, 
back to where you started. I just wanted to show you that when you start to run low on your yarn, and you can see the beautiful work that I have so far, the embroidery stitches, then what you're going to do is the same way that I started. You want to take your last embroidery stitch, and then you're just going to go just outside of the loop, back to the wrong side. Just bring all that yarn through, and make sure that you have enough yarn for burying your loose yarn ends. And then you just get some more yarn onto your tapestry or darning needle. And then you're ready to make your embroidery stitch. So again, you're just going to go right just after the last embroidery stitch. Actually, you're going to come up from the wrong side just outside of the last embroidery stitch. And bring your yarn through and make sure that you have enough on the, the wrong side for tying a knot and then burying your loose yarn ends after we're finished. Be careful when you're tying your knot. You don't want to pull your stitches and mess up your stitches on the right side. So now you're ready to just continue on with your embroidery stitches. And then you just continue making your embroidery stitches just like you did before.